great encouragement from her hugely driven mother, Ida Trophagen, Kanan. Uh, she started writing at the age of six. She won her first short story contest at the age of 11. Um, Marjorie used to love to tell this story about how she was a little girl. When she was a little girl, she would gather up all the children she'd been playing with during the day in the streets of Washington, gather them up on the top step of the Baptist church right near her house. And Marjorie had this wonderful sense of drama. Even then, she'd wait until that moment of dusk when they started lighting the street lamps. And then she would begin telling her stories about love with a capital L. It was being sent off month after month to those same men. That's like the rooster, in case you want to. <laughs> and on the inside, it's not so. Uh, uh, once we leave the house and go on to the trails, we're going to be walking through what was the original road. The tra both trails on this over on this side of the road and this one here. Hollywood created a version of this house down the road. Uh, this house is not. She said that this house was always a shabby house. When she came here, it was a very shabby house. By the time she left, it was less shabby. She said. This is probably the most northernmost orange grove in the country when she lived here. So there were freezes. In the dead of summer, people can't imagine a freeze, but today you can. <coughs> Lovely porch. <laughs> Lovely place for entertaining, but she did a lot of entertaining here on this porch. But first and foremost, this is the real engine of this house. This is where she did most of her writing, writing a sentence or a, a paragraph or even a sentence. She once said to a friend, her, um, her neighbors knew very well, leaning forward with her feet bringing up the rear, they said, look like a hen turkey on the run. <laughs> she went out to her kitchen and got mixing bowls. <laughs> and came in white with wooden mixing bowls and hung them up under the lamps, under the, under the bare bulbs. He had everything. He said, save everything up until then. He brought it all back and laid it out exactly as she had. When she first came was a problem here. First, because she had no money for buying liquor. Uh, and second, because the only liquor nearby, take a, a five gallon oat cask and char the inside and put that raw corn liquor in there in about eight or 10 months. wanted anybody. I talked about this great stream of guests that came here month after month, and she wanted anybody who came all the way out here to Cross Creek to have an unforgettable experience here, which would start maybe with Brandy Alexander's out on the veranda, and the Brandy Alexander's made out of the superb cream that coming from her Jersey cows down in the pasture where you park. And then the maid would come to the door and say, dinner such as it is is served. And they would troop in here uh, 68 courses for 10 to 12 people all by herself. But when Marjorie first came here with Charles Rawlings in 1928, she was cooking for him and her two brothers-in-law on a stove just like this, and she called that the most miserable year of her life. Uh, this is a nice day to spend out here cooking, but most days, many days, or at least six months out of the year, this is a brutal place. Yeah. And we went Marjorie one day, and she was prepared to stay with Panama because it was illegal for her. Hurston, I don't think it was Hurston. Yes, for this great, wonderful story about the story of Hurston. Mark Abbey, Mark was Hurston, so that sometimes he stepped off the Adriatic to be attended to the employment. So I said, I've never had you like that. Street, the story of Rack and the Cool. 
good it was evil. And she knew with racket she got the evil twin. <laughs> because racket could go through this house and open up any door or window. He quite often open up the window of her bedroom and come in, sleep, creep up, and for whatever reason, a hot, hot afternoon, he liked nothing better than open up this door. Um, sometimes he crawl. same plants that she grew. Uh, if you uh, ever looked at Cross Creek, she does a pretty good job of describing all the different vegetables that she grew. So we basically work right off that list that she was growing. So uh, a couple of unique things we have in here. Um, Jeff was able to uh, get seeds for uh, a seminal pumpkin. That's that vine that's growing right along the fence there. And you see one little pumpkin in here and a, a new blossom this morning. That's a native plant actually. Uh, the uh, Seminole pumpkin is a very uh, active plant, we could say, I guess, <laughs> and basically kind of took over part of that area out there. So for the winter season, we decided to kind of try and train him to be inside. That, it's, that, it's, was the, that was the first. Answer. Um, they have proven that it does lower uh, blood sugar, so it is good for diabetes. Um, there's talk of it being a treatment for Alzheimer's. I think this may be a lot of nonsense. I don't know, but you'll be astonished at the various sites on the web devoted to guinea hen weed. 